Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me here today. I'm Jenna Stauffer. We're going to start the show off by talking about a word that you hear about all too often, divorce. Now, the divorce rate in America is the highest in the world, with one in two marriages ending in it. I've recently had on clinical psychologist Dr. Steven Ragusia, and he talked with us about the impact that divorce plays on a child's life. Now, the decision to divorce causes major changes in the lives of all family members. It can be an emotionally trying experience, can even be financially devastating. So with all of that being said, the question remains, why do so many marriages end in divorce? Dr. Ragusia, thanks for being with me this morning. You're welcome. I bet you know what my first question for you is. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we always talk about unhappy subjects? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that, but that's true, right? We do talk about some unhappy subjects. But let's talk about divorce and why do so many marriages these days end in it? Well, it really has to do with a couple of factors, um, one of which, the primary one, has to do with our perceptions about love and marriage. Um, so let me give you a, a brief introduction mm -hmm. to my views on love and marriage. Um, for most of human history, marriages were arranged. Um, people forget that, you know, but for most of human history, people were married because the elders in the community decided that they should be married. Um, sometimes they'd never met one another before their wedding day. Mm -hmm. um, and um, those decisions were made by uh, sometimes parents, sometimes the tribal chief, sometimes the, uh, the governor of the state, sometimes by a, a matchmaker, you know. But the decisions that were made were based upon um, some sort of good, m logical, mature reason, mm -hmm. or at least what people perceived to be mm -hmm. those things. Um, but that went on for a long, long time, and it still goes on like that for much of the world. Um, uh, y you know, people would, for example, a farmer who had good pasture land might say, why don't we have your daughter marry my son, and that way you've got the great water and I've got the great pasture land, so they'll have a perfect farm, mm -hmm. you know? Something so, like that. It made uh, sense to him. That, that's <laughs> right. That's right. And, and you know, they that they might say to one another, well, the kids are only one year old, but he mm -hmm. said, it doesn't matter, they'll get married, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and that's what happened. Um, uh, and, um, and yet, if you read the ancient religious texts, the Bible and the Quran and all the rest of them, um, what you read about is passionate love between husbands and wives, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, how could that happen if the reason why you got married in the first place was because it was arranged. Mm -hmm. Sometimes before you were born, sometimes with somebody you'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the origin of the bridal veil, by the way. Mm -hmm. You've seen, now that we've had a lot more to do with the Middle East, you've seen burqas from the Middle East. For much of human history in various parts of the world, women covered their faces. So when you got to kiss the bride and the bride took away her veil, that was the first time you got to see your spouse. Isn't that crazy? The first time <laughs> you see your spouse when she removes the veil. That's right. Oh, that's but that's, that is the way it was done, not just for centuries, but for millennia. And um, so, in any case, but if you read about lo love and marriage, there's this passion behind it. Well, how mm -hmm. could that be true? And the answer is because people viewed love and marriage in a very, very different way. One of the things they did was they assumed that marriage was a social contract, okay? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll help you meet your needs and then you help me my, meet my needs and that way you'll be happy and I'll be happy because our needs will be met and given that we're married until we die, then we'll be happy until we die mm -hmm. because our needs are being met, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seemed like a logical kind of deal, right. you know? Right. Well, what did that mean? That meant that people got married assuming that they would engage in things like compromise, devotion, sharing, caring, sacrifice, all those things, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So the first time you got sick, for example, you might be deadly ill and your spouse would nurse you back to health, mm -hmm. you know? 
They'd, they'd, they'd be right there for you. Yeah, I mean, they'd put cold compresses on your head and give you water and then tea and then a little chicken soup and mm -hmm. then a little chicken soup with noodles <laughs> and a little toast, you know, right. until finally you got healthy again. And after a couple of weeks of being nursed like that, you might look at that other person and say, you were so good to me. Mm -hmm. I love you. Okay? The assumption was that people would learn to love one another, not that they would get married because they loved one another. But it would eventually come along. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you look at Shakespeare, there are various place in Shakespeare's, places in Shakespeare's plays where he would talk about that concept. In Henry V, for example, there's a segment where Henry's this warrior king and he, he just gets, he's in the middle of a war with France and he defeats France and then he's got to figure out a way to make peace with the country he's just defeated. Mm -hmm. So one of his people says to him, well, you know, the princess of France pretty hot. You might want to think about marrying her. Right. You're single, boss, right. you know. Right. <coughs> and um, he, there's the scene where he and she talk to one another even though neither of them speaks the other's language. Mm -hmm. And they struggle to communicate uh, haltingly and and then Henry says to her so that's who I am do you think you could learn to love me madam mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. the assumption was she would learn to love him mm -hmm. and she says yes and he goes well then we'll bring your father in and everybody will tell him and they announce that they're going to get married and everybody goes around living peacefully after that for a while and happily ever after that's right? right all right we're going to take a quick break right now but we'll talk more about this after the messages stay with us